everybody, and welcome back. Um, we're starting year two of these tech integration workshops, and in a lot of cases, you know, you're here for the second year. And um, what we're going to do today is we're going to follow along kind of the pattern that we started last year, where we'll um, sort of orientate ourselves to what we're talking about. We'll have a little networking time, then we'll move on to the main content. With some networking time at the end again. And since there's going to be some people who haven't been here before, over the course of the year, I'm going to weave back in a lot of what we talked about last year. So today, we're going to be working again with that SAMR model, and we're going to continue that all year. And if you don't know what that is, you'll get into it this year. We're going to uh, continue on with those communication skills for the technology. We talked about it in day, but we didn't really define skills that we want to be curriculum now. And then blogging is something that I wanted to get everybody thinking about. I don't by any means expect anybody who's going to do it with their students this year or maybe even next year. But you really need to understand what the capabilities are. The best way to do anything is do it yourself, which hopefully you saw last year with Enmoto. Maybe you never heard of it before. Then you kind of started seeing as a teacher where you can maybe use it with the students. And um, just for those of you who've never been here before, we do a lot of trying to have you guys talk with one another, compare, and share, and get out the mood. Kind of the same things that we should be having our students do. It's not intended ever these workshops to be a sit and get out. So if something pops in your head as we're talking, just interrupt and we'll take it in whatever direction. I always have a plan for what we do in our two and a half hours, but I never try to shove it all out there. I prefer us to kind of run together and then just cover as much as possible. And just in case you've never um, been here before, I always give you a I don't like paper because I can't click on anything, but some people have this desperate need to have paper in their hands, so this is sort of my balance. On the front of the sheet is always the objectives for what we're doing, and links listed out for things that I intend to work on with you. And the back is always a 3 to one sheet, and this is great to use with students in any class. So if you were a history teacher, it could be the three main causes of the Civil War, the two most important people who um, were involved in whatever the Civil War, and the one reason that you would think positive or negative about something. So you could do this with any content. But what I always want you to think about are what are the three things that you want to remember because you're going to be talking to people next to you, and a lot of times last year, people would come up with something like, oh, some of y'all are using that. It's nothing that I talked about, but you want to remember it. And then two things um, that you're going to talk to somebody else about. Because when we talk about something, the more it becomes a part of your repertoire. And finally, it's always good to promise yourself one thing you want to do over the next 30 days, because it's so easy to come to these things, and then just nothing happens, so making yourself that commitment. And then at the bottom of the 3 to one is always the prayer for the day. And so what we're going to do is um, turn over to the back of the 3 to one sheet. Does anybody not have one? Okay. And these are always above the sign-in sheet at the front door. So this. So, what I'd like us to do is just put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. I am, as always, grateful to see you all. It's been a long time since we've been together, five months, and I know from talking to people, everybody always has a lot of changes in their lives, whether it's a birth or a marriage or a death or just a change in what 
what's going on, family life or your school life. So, you know, it's always about, you know, asking God to take care of us. And so we're going to have our gathering prayer. We we'll say together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, your word is your gift to us. And the call to reach new heights by using our talents to the good of all. Let our Lord our word keep you in grace and carry out your lucky plan. Help us to meet this day's responsibilities. Bless the work we have begun. Make good its defects and let us finish in a way that pleases you. We make this prayer in your name. Amen. Good morning, Dr. Dance. I thought you were before. I can't get to see the other hand. I really enjoyed what when you came in and you said, this technology has a different name than the presentation. Ah. You know, they really write that and it's kind of like, oh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you all are enjoying. And um, how many of you are you at for the financials? I missed the Monday, Tuesday because I was um, at a conference. But I did make Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That was great. I really just thought it was so good at the opportunity that we had. And as tech integrated, you have a lot of people counting on you. Time I speak with you, you are so important. The man actually takes you. Each of those roles are key, which man can help you every one of you. But your role here, creativity, the innovation, the going to the classroom, helping the teachers, integrating technology. We talk about you all the time. And one of the best things in the archives is the continue to be excellent. So, and it all goes back to thank you. So as Dr. Davis was saying, one of the things that I want to just um, focus on before we start anything we're going to do is we're the fun analysts. And just you have these comments, questions, concerns, people said things back at me while I was in, you're trying to figure things out. And, you know, I can just say, you know, do you want to start with the broad chats? So, um, I think it's good. I okay. think it's good. But I've also got a lot of students who right. you know, might not, you know, anyone can see it, but right. you know what I mean? And you know, Christina and I were talking about that, and what you got to keep in mind for whoever's feeling that, that nervousness, is first of all, the expectation is, is minimal, say what your lesson, really demands the content, right, the skills, the students. And, you know, everything else is what they feel like they'd like to add to it. And what we were talking about, too, is, you know, sometimes people have this idea. It's like, oh, my gosh, people are going to be trying to be analyzing it. And if you think about it, there were, I think Barbara said, around 1,000 teachers. Each of them have maybe eight classes, so that's 8,000 entries. And then maybe you do six. And, you know, I'm sure that that the principal is going to be pretty good at trying to calm them down a little bit. Uh, you know, she was saying that if you're using somebody else's idea, you should get um, permission from them first. And everybody was saying, well, why are we doing it publicly if you have to, if you put yourself out there, you should assume that people are going to use their teachers. Right. So why go through that extra step? And, and the only reason for the extra step is purely because if you look at a thousand teachers, let's let's say half of them are afraid. What are people going to think of my work? I mean, a couple times I hear people oh, saying, so "Sorry, I'm late. Late. no, 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 relax. Come on in. I'll give you this chair, and I'll take my chair." Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. But um, you know, there there are so many different feelings people have that Rubicon just puts it out there that you know it's a professional courtesy to say, "Do you mind if I use this?" Yeah. I think the problem some of our teachers had was a lot of people who do is pay teachers. Oh, okay. So their concern is that they're, they're personally paying for some of the worksheets that they do. Ah, oh, well, they don't post them. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Right. Right. And actually, 
actually they don't even have the right to post in the previews of teaching, K teachers, and paying, you know, seven dollars, two dollars, whatever it is, they're breaking copyright if they do post it. So and then some of them would like to get paid. Okay. And again, and so then you know what you do is and again tell them this, put the minimum. I mean, I would encourage, even if they're not comfortable with it, if you want to look at things, right. then a couple weeks later, go back and do a double two way right. and, and keep the skill up on where things are and how you want things. And what I'm really talking about are the people who have the heels in the mud yeah. and they're just like getting their hand. It's like just one thing. But you're right. And, you know, my hope would be you use it and you just see the personal benefit. Because I know that I would have. But to have it, I mean, it's an awesome so thing. Lovely. Yeah, and so, you know, but still, I would have some things there. I have some things on the network drive, some things in Google, and links and whatever, and to me, it would just be a benefit. So, like Don's saying, add a little bit, see if you like it a little more. Is, is there a place that you could find the standard for, like, our curriculum now before you actually go into Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. A social studies teacher or a tech teacher. What you can do first, Teresa, is go to, um, let's see, report, references, and adopted standards. And when you go to references and adopted standards, what it's going to do is it's going to give you a drop down. And so. From this drop down, you can choose whatever standard it is that you want to look at first. And again, you know, if you're talking to one of your science teachers or your history teacher, whatever, that's where they can go for that. And you can look at it in advance and see. So you could kind of look at that first and see what it is that you're doing. So you could definitely do that. Yes. And then with the math and with the English language arts, they actually have it broken down by trimester, so they can look at the similar place of the adopted standards for the uh, art and English language arts or math and look at that first. And you know, here's the hope. You know, tech tools are supporting student performance. I nailed it. Now, you know none of us are there really for the most part. But what we're trying to do by getting together with these tech workshops is really taking the time to listen to one another and to not memorize everything that everybody talks about today and bring every last thing back. So what I always want you to do when we're here is listen to what's going on, take it in for yourself, and if you hear something that might work for your students, use it yourself first. If you hear something that you would say, oh my gosh, the kindergarten teacher, this would be great, talk to them one on one. But go back to the principal and share with them, these are some things that I heard that I think might benefit us, and see how you can pair up with people. So, you know, it takes a long time to make a change in the school. Now, one of the things we did last year was we worked with an idea of this thing called flickers. And many people have electronic devices that you can let students vote. And they're called clickers. So clickers, if you recall, paper clickers. And they tend to be a little easier to set up than those physical devices people buy, which is a shame because you probably spent 32 thousand, you know, thirty-two hundred dollars on them. But anyhow, there's a number of ways that teachers can get feedback from their students. And being that we come from schools that either are technology rich, every child in the middle school has their own computer, to technology poor, where if you're lucky there is one part of Apple iPads to the entire school and maybe the internet works. So I try to give everybody different ideas. And the thing that I like about clickers is that this is a great tool if the only technology your teacher has is their personal cell phone or iPad or a single iPad that the school uses. Because as long as you have one device with a camera, and it could be Android or I, you know, Apple iOS, a 
as long as you have this, the teacher can ask kids questions and the kids hold up these cards. And then you use your cell phone program to just scan the room. And if you happen to be lucky and have a computer with a projector, not only can you scan the room, but the kids can see the uh, picture being built, the graph of what's being asked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to look at your card. Everybody's card is associated with their own name. And Eric's, you're the only one whose name I didn't have, so I'll know which card yours is. And what I want you to do is look at the cards. Each card has a number. And so online, your number is associated with your name so that I can go back as a teacher and reflect on what answers you gave later. And the edges of the cards have A, B, C, or D. So I want you to make the letter face the ceiling that goes with the answer for clickers. Thinking about clickers, A, I am an expert, so you put that to the ceiling and you feel you're an expert. And by the way, an expert just means you've used it with kids and you've set up something and you feel like, you know, hey, I can do this. B, I used it with students and their faculty, maybe the faculty used it too, so you try it once, maybe this year you want to try it all more, that's a B person. C, I didn't try, or I don't think it's going to work in my school. And D, I have no idea what it works in school. So show me your A, B, C, or D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my cell phone and start up the app. And then I turn on the camera. And what I just do is I walk around the room. And I'm going to do half of the room for a second. And then I'm going to show you what would happen in the stock of app. I'm going to show you what would happen if you had a computer and a projector in your room. So I'm going to go over to the internet and over to clickers. And I'm going to the live view. And when I'm looking at the live view, you can see who's already been scanned, or I can look at the graph and start seeing how people feel about things. So now I'm going to go back to Carla. And the big thing with this is kids can put their fingers on the black or it doesn't scan. And you can actually scan five or six kids at the same time. So this, if you've never seen it before or you forgot about it, can be a really good tool. And so there's at least two people in the room who really feel pretty expert. And four of you who say, you know what, I use it with students or faculty, maybe the faculty can use it. Bunch of you haven't tried, or maybe it's not going to work at your school. And then, of course, two of you who never really heard of clickers before. And the reason that this becomes important, and this is where <coughs> we didn't really go too much further than this last year, is that. When we work with tools, I always try to show you the teacher mindset behind them. And I think one of the things we got a little bit weak on last year was remembering to go back and reflect on what you saw. Okay? So when you're working with teachers on this or when you're using it yourself, always remember you want to go and take a look at the results so that you can drive the learning somewhere else. So if you were doing multiplication with the order of operations, you could put an order of operations problem, scan the room, and what you'd want to do is you'd want to put some answers that you know kids get it wrong. Like, you know, kids in order of operations, sometimes they just plow right to left, and that's the answer. Sometimes they remember parentheses, but they forget exponents. So you'd want to develop your ABCD answers to give you feedback that's going to help you interpret what the students, you know, where they made the mistake. And so for us, what I'm going to do is take a look at the results. And I'm going to go back to the students. And I'm going to reveal the answers. So Pat and Eric <coughs> are people who use clickers and feel really, really good at that. So Pat and Eric, you know, they're good people to talk to if you want to say, you know, when we're talking networking, how are you using it? You know, they're good people to ask. And then, um, let's see, Mary Rose, Candace, 
Carla and Teresa are again good people. They used it either themselves or with students. And those of you who didn't try it or don't think it uh, would work in your school, do you have any questions or comments about it? The reason I'm laughing is I am fruit. Yeah, that's all. It's just practice because the first time I showed you, it came out after I had my students. It was like last year over the summer that I heard about it. So the first time I was showing you was like the first time I was using it as a you know as a tool. And now I've used it a ton with you guys. I've used it with the new teachers and the mentors and the principals and a couple of um, things I did outside of work. And so I'm just better at it. So that's all. So it's, yeah, it, it was user error. Because I think that's why I didn't try. Yeah. I felt like it took a long time just to get the answers. Yeah, it's yeah. user error. Like now I know, no fingers on the card. And that, that was huge when I found that. So yeah, definitely it was user. Yeah. Yeah. I think I had help of C and showing you, so I mean, my kids show up. Okay, what did I say? Me too. Absolutely. Just being honest. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I, I think it was the numbers. I think Mine is nine, but I look, I, when I look at your record, I have a ten there. That's that. That's C. And that's the number and again, you know, this is this is going back to that user error. Maybe I just moved too fast and I wasn't grabbing it. No, I think you got it right. But and if you look at it, like when I saw my name earlier, I was doing a different window. I was number ten. I think my card. I'm a nine. Oh, okay. So you know what, Mary Rose, that could be what it is. I might have typed, I might have stapled the wrong person's card. Oh. So, well, so I wrote it. I wrote it for all of you. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. You so, did write my name here. I did. But the number, my number here is 9, but in the computer it's 10. And again, so that's user error. <laughs> so, you know. But it's shown us that it did read my card. Right, right, right. So, that was the goal. so again, that's, that's been, you know, that's the thing with technology we use, yes. and that's sort of the next thing I wanted to mention, is that when, um, you know, when you're working with teachers, <coughs> sometimes technology is like a class of students. I was thinking about this recently. I went back to St. Michael's to visit, and I got dog piled up on the second, which is like, oh my gosh, this is where we're arguing. And so, you know, it was kind of nice. And as I was thinking about each of the kids who was in that class because I was driving back, it started making me think about, you know, when I was with the kids, sometimes I didn't know which of those kids didn't eat breakfast. I didn't know which of those kids were up until 2 in the morning, even though they were, you know, second graders. I didn't know if I was going to start school that day, and they were going to drop off a new child and say, didn't anybody tell you this is your new student? Or conversely, a student leaves, and I find out three weeks later, oh yeah, that family left. And that's how technology can be. Sometimes technology is just cranky. I tried to use this a couple of weeks ago, and again, it was user error that I forgot to turn on the camera, and it wasn't showing me the results. And so part of your job as tech integrators is to help people understand that sometimes it takes three or four or 20 times to get comfortable with things. So if I was doing this with a class and they said to me, oh, Mrs. Zorro, you know, it says C and I said B, it might take a while for me to realize, oh, I have Carla as number nine, but she's really number 10. So yeah, so technology sometimes, it's user error. And then the problem with the teachers that you show these things to would be like, well, it doesn't work. And it's like, well, let's think about what happened. And then, you know, part of your job is sort of stepping through. 
What I do is I sign on to clickers.com on my computer, and then with the app, I signed on to the app with my email ID. And so it just uses the internet and makes magic happen. Yeah. But you have to be signed on to the same account in both the iPad or cell phone and the .com. Okay, so that's how. So when I go to live view, it kind of looks at where in the internet my scanning device is, and then marries it up to the charts. So we're going to do a little um, time to network and talk with each other, and I want to get everybody up and moving. So what we're going to do is a quick game of the ultimate rock, paper, scissors. If you've never played it, it's a lot of fun. You can do it with a couple hundred people in about four minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it, it really is a nice way to meet people. So what you're going to do, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So whoever is sitting next to you, we're all going to stand up. And if you have, everybody knows rock, paper, scissors? Right here. So you're just going to do one round. You're not going to do best of three. But if you tie, if everybody does rock or whatever, do it again. So before you do it, introduce yourself, what do you teach, where do you work, quick rock, paper, scissors. And then whoever's the winner finds the other group near them. Again, everybody introduce yourselves. And then the winners are going rock, paper, scissors. What's that? The loser No, the loser, becomes, the loser becomes your cheering team. It's great for if you're ever looking for something at school. And um, so I'm going to open it up to does anybody have anything? Just initially, that you'd like to share. I did something well. Two teachers and I did something really cool. We did a station lesson using an Xbox, iPad, and regular um, worksheets. No kidding. Uh, last Friday, because half the school went on their uh, vacation. <laughs> Field trip. Field trip. So we took um, four print pictures and combined them into groups of six. And we set up stations in different classrooms that we. Um, Wanted to teach the stream basically. We did technology, math, uh, and then we did a uh, It was a religious because they wanted to, to learn how to do music. Oh, okay. And good workers and you know, other groups. So what we yep. did was one group had a pattern worksheet. We had these little patterns that I just put together on the picture now, actually. Um, they had three worksheets to do in five minutes, and then once that five minutes was up, they would hear a bell or something or other. Okay. So I did a fog horn. Cool. Okay. And the classroom that I was in, that was one of my classroom on the Xbox set up with the Connect. We were uh -huh. playing Just Dance. Oh. But they were doing the Tetris song, which made sense. Oh my gosh, okay. So they were working as pairs, so they had to be the actual shapes. Cool. So they were doing that. It was like about five minutes. So once that went off, I did the fog horn, made the switch. And the last one, actually, we did the after I told you about last year, yeah, yeah, can you remind yeah. everybody? It's an app on the iPad where um, it has music in the background and, you can, and it has shapes and the basic pattern, but it's also a simple coding. What app is called? Luke Kikomo, L O P I M A F M E N E L, yeah. Luke Kikomo, yep. And um, in the last room, they came together and they developed a pattern that they could develop. Wow, what? And it, and it, if we started on Wednesday, like the planning, and on Friday we went around for 40 minutes flat, all the kids got done, all the kids participated, pictures, and then. Wow. So up on your tech page of uh, school, you got to have some, some pictures eventually. Nice. So now kids will not go to the field trip so they can stay home. <laughs> 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 yeah. I couldn't have planned it better. I was very excited. And then I got to observe the nerves. Yeah, so if you have any thoughts about that, John's a great person to get in touch with. To, you know, and again, we have some different ways to communicate, and Moto is a great way to get in touch. Um, so we you know, share each other's email addresses or whatever. So thank you. That's, that's awesome. What's the name of the afternoon? Lupamo, L O O P I N A. And you can use it for um, like shapes, patterns, music. It actually is like a screen program in itself. Wow. Because 
Kids love to cook. That's right. Kids love to have and little ones love music. And yeah. Dancing bears and animals and stuff. So, but it gets complex really fast. But, it's, but again, everyone. it's a great yeah. start. Yeah. We have what they, what's called a uh, MakerBot um, 3D replicator, which is not quite the high end, but it's not low end. It's kind of in the middle there. Um, I think it was a little over a couple thousand dollars. And um, I just wanted to show you, uh, we started this at the end of last school year, and I'm picking it up again. Um, my students in middle school, uh, this happened to be a sixth grade project, were using Google Earth to take a bird's eye view of our downtown area, of which our school and church is part of the downtown. And each of them took a different building to recreate in Tinkercad, which is a online, three, uh, it's a 3D um, design uh, website. And this is a, a, a replication of our church. We have a church in the round. Um, so one of our students made this last year and I just printed it. So we're going to be printing slowly because it is a long process. All the different buildings, um, our school, the playground, the thing, everybody's taking a different part. And we're going to be putting it on a, a, a flat, like a map or whatever, and make like a, a relief map using the 3D objects that they printed. So I'll pass it around. This is um, uh, something that uh, took six hours to print. Just so you get an idea, that's why it's going to be a while before I have this done. Um, this is what's called the um, standard resolution. You could have a higher resolution, which obviously would take longer, where you won't have as much texture. Or if you want a quick print because you're just testing out a prototype that you're interested in, you can do low, low resolution, which would be much more grainier um, when it prints. But um, I thought maybe this would be fun to just show you. This oh, way. yeah, absolutely. And, um, and it comes, oh, it's plastic, so you don't print in ink, obviously, you print in plastic. And the, uh, the printer has a, a heating unit inside it that melts the plastic, and then as it comes down, it's making your mold, and it starts cooling immediately. Um, and and then if I'm not mistaken, Mary Rose, your school's Facebook page has a little video clip of it in action, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Teresa, if you, if you get... Mary Rose's yeah. school name, and you go to their Facebook page, there's a little clip that you can watch it on your channel. Oh, wow. Okay. So you buy the plastic in wheels, or wheels, I guess. They're about three big. It comes in dozens of colors. How much would that be? No. Actually, it's not that bad. I mean, Makerbot is probably one of the more affordable companies. Um, I'm trying to think of how much the um, you get the twelve uh, different color wheels that last forever. I mean, I, I haven't even made a dent in them, and I think it might have been like two or three hundred dollars. So it's really not too bad. And Mary Rose is at Academy of Our Lady. These the the ten cards have people's schools on the bottom, so if you don't get a chance, so we had, we had our IT company bring in a portable um, 3D printer. And it was maybe a nine-inch cube, and that's how big it was. It was, it was really small, and he said that if it could be purchased in Best Buy, like for five hundred dollars. Now, of course, the, the the heating element isn't too much bigger than this. So what he made was a tiny little um, robot, right. and it took maybe an hour and a half for it to to do that. But um, the one that I have, you can go online. It's makerbot.com. It takes up only this much space mm -hmm. on the table, and it's about yay high. And the cool thing too was kind of fun. I um, I started the print around one o'clock in the afternoon. I um, had a volleyball game after school, which I was coaching, and my phone goes off, and it was Makerbot, the printer, telling me my printer finished because it has an app. That's and as long as you're within the vicinity of the Wi-Fi, and it actually takes a picture at the end, so oh you can gosh. see how you can stream it actually watch it so because what it can happen is and it does happen that you might have a problem with the design and all of a sudden it's spewing out plastic but it's not making the object mm -hmm. so that could of course waste you know material um, so that this particular company I think has a nice you know yeah uh, people that I hear talking MakerBot seems to be the school level yeah I think it's good for our, our purposes right. yeah it would be something that I would maybe recommend for you know the high end stuff. Right? With the, the Tinkercad, did you just take a picture? 
picture of something they actually they designed it. A three-dimensional design? Sorry? Three-dimensional design? Yeah. It's wow. really designed. I, you what should look at it. It's really fun, even if you don't print the object, but to make your objects. I had, as young as, um, let's see, I had fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth using Tinkercad. Tinkercad? What's the name? Tinker, C-A-D. Like, C -A -D. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 CAD. Tinker, T-I-N-K-E-R-CAD.com. It's a great sort of design or something as right. well. Right. 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 But it's really geared for young students. Like it's not a, like I would a high school student, college would find it kind of too uh, low level. Um, the other one that um, I also recommend if your kids get really good at 3D design is one, two, three D design. That's another good one. Uh, by Autodesk. Oh, oh so that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, my what I'm doing right now, um, I have a business project I'm doing with my seventh and eighth where they run their own business and they have to create everything from the business plan to a floor plan to a logo, business cards, so on and so forth. And the last thing is they have to design something and put it in their store. Oh, no. And they have to do it on a 3D printer. So yeah, it kind of brings that all together. And you know, this isn't for everyone. No, but no. it's no. nice, you know, even like Pat was saying to bring in a yes. tech company as a Sure. Just show and tell kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And we just say we just try, try it on the pretty uh barbecue uh learn to design and then came up with the uh we got an extra paper first and then inside the picture card. Oh yeah, yeah, right. So they sent me an email about last week with the email on the picture and the picture and the but um they make a minimum of a million paper pair. Yes. And that is They're going to demonstrate all of that. We have also have people who want to make things or have made things to come out to that. So that's yeah. you know, November is the 8th. And I guess that's many of the parts, you know, it's not yes. it's going to be a right. Right. Mm -hmm. across the nation. So that's a good thing to so that's something you want to see this in action for yourself. Right. Right. And then just also to take back what uh, Mayor Mary said, yes. Um, yes, Tinker Hat Cat is really great and everything, but they also have, like, for me, I'm learning the 3D printing, which I think is awesome. But to get more in depth, there's a project night.autodesk.com that okay. gives you like um, hours of the Tinkercad, how to use the three nice. So it gives you, it takes you step by step for the lessons. If you just go straight into Tinkercad, mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, little basic lessons here and there. But like for me, I'm already taking the courses. It's free online oh, yep. through that website and it's linked through Tinkercad. And it's like about four hours of, uh, oh, okay. you know, lessons to go through. What is that again? It's called Project Ignite. Autodesk. Mm -hmm. Com. It's a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Somebody should sure get no thing. Oh, okay. That. <coughs> Most of the three printers, um, like, they have the same process as this uh, printer. Because, like, I use them. Are they all like that now? Yeah, like, they I used to have one. I had one in block. high school, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we had blocks in my present. Yes, and, and then it kind of it it's kind of done itself. Yeah. yeah. So like for instance, like if you're gonna do this, I would have to get a, a block that oh, big. Okay. And then it's it, would, away, right? it would chip it away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think this is much more like ink with plastic. Yeah. yeah. This, okay. this is this is way more, I think, um, yeah. 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 And think of it like the play doh with screws. So that's what they call it, the extruder. Oh, yeah, they actually yeah, love the yeah. And then when we were just talking about this, we were doing it really on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. But then in those TED Talks, yes. they had something that really tied into this. So then it, it had a lot more meaning for the kids. Yeah, yeah. actually, I, I don't know that, I think maybe one of our schools is doing it, but it may have only been online, but, was, but a couple of schools are actually printing prosthetic hands. Part of that, right? Yeah. They were printing the AHA. Doing that. AHA. <laughs> yeah, I went, when I went to the open house with my daughter, yeah. they were coming in and they were like, they're actually donating those prosthetics to. Yes. Um, Doesn't that just give me the chills? I mean, that's so cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Just a title yeah. 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 I've been doing it for like a year and a half now. If you want to get a uh, class grade um, 3D printer, Fiber Knowledge, you can get a Da Vinci, XYZ Printing Da Vinci. What? That's what we do in the school. The only problem is 
which is massive. Okay. Wow. It could have been student grade, but they use ABS and PLA plastic. It comes in drums. So oh. it's easy to maintain. The higher end ones we use resin now that actually builds from the bottom up. Right. Which is the like the the thing, but the other um chipping away it actually looks like from Terminator 2. Right. When you send the team look out coming out of the resin. So yeah, because that's how you're just that's how mine is right. Yeah, it up. yeah, it's pretty cool. But um we're doing something similar. We're doing a science feature. We're doing bones. So nice. we're going to print out bones and then yeah. with the upper grade you have to make a skeleton. Okay. And when they're done, the little one, we're going to bury it in sand oh. and then we'll dig up the bones. Oh my god, that's so cute. So you're right, because you say it takes so long to print. I we, have, we had one issue where one of the kids was doing uh, years and he wanted to return. Right. And the print was 13 hours. Wow. So we let it go two days and then when it finally finished, right. the, it was so hot that it just melted the plastic oh. together. So it was a paperweight and it was oh. years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you pause it? You can pause it. Yep. Yeah. So, so you would start it and then yeah. go home and then come back the next the day. The problem was that the kids developed them all at the same time. So I was like, oh, we might as well just try to see what happens instead of doing each year by itself. Right, which would have made more sense. Really more sense. And the other thing is you can't switch the color yeah. in between. You'd have to, like, like <clears> the problem, <throat> when the kids were designing like TV Bank or some of the other buildings, they wanted different colors. For the, uh, and I'm like, well, you have to then decide how much you want to design for your first piece, how much you want to design for your second piece. Then you can switch the plastic, and then you have to put it together. You know, so it's kind of like a you know, you have to right, right, right. design thing. Yeah. yeah. And you also make colored plastic, but you get colors in the Right, yeah. So it's, it's cool. It's cool. Yes. Yeah. When you change from one reel to the next, like, is there a residual color in there? You have to let it uh, spew out before you can start printing. It's it's six seconds for that to happen. And so yeah, so this you know this is where networking is great for us because you'd never hear this without having a chance to talk. It's a great marketing tool too because yes. if you're in a area like we're in a very um, high end neighborhood with very good school, public schools. Yeah. Okay, so we're right. constantly fighting the public schools for for attention. Right. And when we have open house, we have this thing going. And you know, and, and Public schools apparently don't have that right now, or the high schools have, but not the middle school. Right. You know, so that's another thing that you can do as a marketing. Oh, absolutely. And you can that show that you're not in the 1960s. You really are in the 21st century. Right. And that's where sometimes the Catholic schools really get national. 